Shall we start um, with the very first one you talk about, Scarra yeah. Bray in Orkney, which actually I have been to, and Mark told me he's been to as well. Um, it's the oldest place you visit. When, when was it built? Could you tell us a little bit about Scarra Bray? Yeah, so Scarra Bray is um, fascinating. I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, people present at this drink will have visited it as well. It's on Orkney. Um, and not only is it one of the oldest places in um, Britain, it's the, the best preserved Neolithic commune, I would call it, not really a village, in the whole of Northern Europe. And j just to put that in perspective, um, it was built in the Stone Age, the final part of the Stone Age, when humans stopped being nomadic hunter-gatherers, as they had been for two and a half million years, began to put down settled communities sustained by agriculture. Um, so it was a hinterland, you know, a shadowland, of, if you like, of, of its own, when you have this moment, probably the most momentous shift that, that we've had in, in humanity, um, completely different way of living. And of course, most of these places have long since crumbled, they've long since vanished. Scarra Bray is advantageous because it was made of stone, very few trees on Orkney, they didn't have much choice. And then ultimately it was buried in this gargantuan sand dune for over 5,000 years. And no one knew it was there until a storm of 1850 ripped off the lid of this dune, revealing within this eerie place, as I'm sure you, 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 you felt when you went there, it's like the inhabitants have just left. And you know, we might have an image of like cavemen with axes, like horrifically sort of fighting invaders and the environment, but actually there's a sense of kind of mellow domesticity. You can see probably some of the things that all your listeners have and, and can see at the moment, like a pine dresser, like a nice bed frame, like a roaring fireplace and little ornaments. And, and, and through the cold abyss of millennia, you do feel a flicker of sort of empathy and warmth. And, and we, we don't know what this place was built for. We don't know why all the houses were the same. We don't know why all the streets were sort of semi subterranean um, but a lot of it is instantly recognizable. Um, so I thought that would be a good one to start with yeah. because yeah. it, it lays the found. I wanted to show that how the idea of a map is intrinsically fragile because th th there's thousands and thousands and thousands of these lost places that don't appear on our maps anymore, just as so many, sadly, of our communities, particularly the coastal ones, are going to end up the same way as Dunwich. So it, it, it's me meant to be a sort of elegiac resurrection of the past, but also some sort of awful premonition of the future. 